Romeo and Juliet model of oscillation. This is going to be a very different video for me because I am going to tell a love story. Our two characters for this love story are Romeo and Juliet. Let's meet Juliet. She's a rather stable woman and she will love Romeo in whatever proportion that Romeo loves her. Romeo, uh, he's a little bit more quirky. If Juliet pours on the love too strongly, well, he doesn't like that and he backs off and can even start disliking her. But if Juliet is not treating Romeo real well, I guess that's a challenge to him and he's gonna pour on his love very strong. Well, we can define this mathematically. Let's define a function R that measures how much love Romeo has for Juliet and how much he's expressing that love. So if it's greater than zero, he's pouring on lots of love to Juliet. If it's less than zero, well, he hates Juliet and he's not treating her so well. And basically the same thing for Juliet. Let's define a function J, how much she loves Romeo and how much love she is expressing to him. If it's greater than zero, she loves Romeo. If it's less, she hates Romeo and he's, she is treating him pretty poorly. Based on their personalities and these functions, we can write equations that describe their personality and how they will relate to each other. Let's start with Juliet. So we have a time derivative of the Juliet function. So how much her love changes will change in proportion to how much love Romeo is giving her. So as Romeo gives her more love, her love will increase. And if he's treating her poorly and not loving her, well, her love will decrease and can become dislike. Now, Romeo has a similar looking equation, but there's a sign difference here. So this means as Juliet is pouring on love, well, he's actually going to back off on his love. It will decrease, he will like her less. And similarly, if she's actually disliking Romeo, well, I guess that's kind of a challenge. And then the negative sign will actually cause his love and how much he expresses his love to increase. Let's tell the story and see what happens. Well, Romeo and Juliet first meet. Juliet does not know Romeo at this point, so she's rather indifferent, but Romeo, this is love at first sight. Now all this love that Romeo has been pouring on, well, that makes Juliet respond with a bit of love. But as Juliet starts responding with some love, eh, Romeo's backing off a little bit, but he still loves Juliet and is showing her some love. Well, at this point, Juliet is madly in love with Romeo. But now that Romeo's getting all this love, well, he's maybe getting a little bit nervous by that and he's backing off and has become somewhat indifferent to Juliet. Because Romeo's been somewhat indifferent, well, Juliet is backing off a little bit on her love, but she is still showing Romeo love. Well, this continues to turn off Romeo and he's starting to dislike Juliet. Well, Juliet being disliked, you know, she's not loving him as much anymore and is kind of indifferent at this point. And because of all the love she has been showing Romeo, Romeo completely hates Juliet at this point. Let's fast forward a little bit. Well, Juliet's not pouring on the love anymore because she's been rather indifferent. So Romeo dislikes her less, but She's still not getting any love from Romeo, so she starts to dislike Romeo. A little bit later, Juliet's been getting nothing from Romeo except dislike and hate, so at this point, she really hates Romeo. Romeo, because she hasn't been getting a lot of love from Juliet, well, he's not disliking her as much and maybe even starting to think he might be a little bit interested in her. So a little bit later, he starts to fall back in love and show Juliet some love. Getting some love, yeah, Juliet's still upset at Romeo, but is disliking him less. So because of all the dislike and the challenge that Juliet's giving Romeo, Romeo is back fully in love with Juliet 
and Juliet's rather indifferent. And they're back to where they started, and this will repeat. And it's because of the difference in their personalities that this process will repeat. And until one of them changes, they will continue there to oscillate between love and hate. Let's do this mathematically. So we can start off with the governing equation for each Romeo and Juliet, and we'll manipulate these equations doing the same thing. The first thing we'll do is differentiate the equations with respect to time. So we'll get a second order derivative with respect to time on the left and a first order derivative with respect to time on the right. Now staring at these, let's look at Romeo's equation. On the right hand side, we have a first order derivative of the Juliet function. Well, that's her governing equation. So we can just replace this first order derivative of the Juliet function with R. We can put R in in Romeo's equation. And similarly, in Juliet's equation on the right-hand side, we have a first derivative of the Romeo function, which is just negative j, which we can drop in on the right side of her equation. The last step we'll do to derive the differential equations for each is to move the r and j terms over to the left-hand side, and so we have an equation equaling zero. This is the final differential equations that describe Romeo and Juliet. Observe, these are the same equation, so they will have the same solution. Let's go ahead and solve these. Same equation, same general solution. But we have to think about the initial conditions, and I won't go too much into that, but suffice to say, they're both oscillating functions One's a cosine, one's a sine. They're a little bit out of phase with each other. That's why this oscillates. So let's compare this to what happens in electromagnetics. So Romeo and Juliet started off with a governing equation that describes their personality. And it's this sign difference here. That's the only difference between their two equations. And it's this personality difference that led to this, this oscillating love story. Well, if we look at electromagnetics, we have a similar love story with the electric and magnetic fields. It's the two curl equations. And notice these equations look the same, except for this sign difference here. And it's this personality difference that leads to an oscillation between the magnetic and electric fields. And that's what creates the wave phenomenon. 